Hi everyone, I'm Drew Roberts, Senior Product Manager here at Magnet Forensics. Today, I'm going to walk you through setting up an EC2 instance in AWS for use with Axiom Cyber, which can enable you to perform remote collections from targets that aren't connected to your physical network or VPN. What we wanted to do was, when we talk about um, running Axiom in the cloud, running Axiom in EC2, for a lot of people, it's pretty straightforward, but, but folks who haven't, um, it can be a little bit daunting. You know, it's kind of new. It's I don't want to say it's scary, but like there's a there's a learning curve there, right? So what we want to do is we wanted to really really quickly give like a high level overview of what that's like. What is it? What does that actually mean? Um, and then we wanted to show you what it looks like to actually do an off network collection um, using an instance of Axiom Cyber running the cloud. So you can see here, I'm actually logged into um, an AWS management console on one of our accounts. Like I said, it can be pretty scary. There's a lot of stuff you can do in AWS, but EC2 is basically Amazon's um, virtual machine infrastructure. So you click on an EC2 link, and then again, you get a lot of options over here, but you can start to look at instances that are running or that have been previously created. I guess I'll go to, I'll go to all of them. And basically these are just VMs. And so if you want to spin up a new one, um, you kind of just run through this little wizard. You go and you hit launch instances. So the first step in running a new instance is you pick an AMI. So basically an AMI, it's just kind of Amazon speak for the base image, right? So it can be anything from just a Windows Server OS, right? Clean install to uh, base images that have extra stuff installed. Um, so you can do things like you can even create your own where you have things like, you know, software pre-installed. Um, I have one where I've got Axiom Cyber pre-installed and all the ports and everything opened up. But basically you select your operating system. Um, next step is you're presented with like, how big of a machine do you want to run? Do you want four CPUs and 16 gigs of RAM? How fast of internet do you want, et cetera? And there's, you know, there's a whole host of, of options here. Um, and obviously the pricing, the compute pricing that, that you end up paying is going to depend on the instance that you select. We're going to be posting some information to uh, to the customer portal on, on recommended configurations for Axiom in the cloud. Um, but kind of the, the general purpose or compute optimized one as well as a storage one. I'm going to pick the compute optimized one, which is a C5 2X for large. So I got C5 2X for large, eight CPUs, 16 gigs of RAM, up to 10 gigabytes. You can see, again, if you're not familiar with the way storage works in EBS, there's basically two options. There's EBS and then there's actual SSDs. Basically the difference is EBS um, lives for the lifetime of your VM. Once you terminate it, that storage goes away. Whereas when you have SSDs, I think that those things actually persist. Um, and you can do things like hook up um, S3 buckets and stuff to it. So for today, I'm just gonna go do a real quick EBS. It's just a wizard you go through. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of these kind of specifics. The two things I wanted to call out obviously would be the size of your, of your drive. By default, it generally goes to, to 30. I like to bump it up to 100 at least. Obviously you're gonna want enough um, storage to acquire whatever it is that you're trying to acquire. And, you know, it can be challenging to know that ahead of time, but they can definitely always come back and, and, and increase these things or add new volumes um, to those virtual machines. And then the other thing I want to talk about was the security group. So basically, the great thing and the whole reason that this enables off network collections is these things are internet facing, right? They're not sitting behind, they're sitting behind a firewall, but they're not sitting behind multiple layers of firewalls the way things are, you know, in a corporate environment. And so the last part of the process is like, hey, you know, this is going to sit behind a firewall, but what do you want to walk through? Um, and this is where we can say, okay, well, I know that Axiom Cyber, the way it works is when I deploy an agent, that agent attempts to make an outbound connection back to Axiom. And all I need to do is allow that agent through. Um, and I get to define the port range when I create that agent. Um, so I'm going to pick 4321 as my port range. They give you some control here around, like, how open do you want that to be? You can you can narrow that down to a specific IP or IP range. So maybe stuff that's, you know, known to your corporate environment to try and prevent any additional access from people who might be trying to sneak in. I'm just going to go ahead and do this 0.0.0, which is basically anywhere. And I'm going to tear this down afterwards. But basically that what this is going to do is this is going to allow traffic to get through. And then I'm going to, hey, review and launch. And then I'm going to launch. Interesting thing here, again, you know, something you'll learn as you as you start to play more and more with AWS. Um, the way they secure these things is they have you create this private key file, and that's how they generate the passwords for the VMs. So right now, this, there's not like a default password on the thing. I'm going to use one of my existing private keys. 
Um, and what happens is once it launches, and it takes a couple minutes for it to be available, but see this guy with a little dot. Now I've got a VM running the cloud. I want to connect to it. I, I right click on it. I go to connect. Basically, all you're going to do is you're going to remote desktop, remote desktop to it, right? Windows hard EP, just like any other VM in your environment. I get password once it's available. You select that. Um, that file that you previously created, save your desktop, and it generates a password for you. And you can copy and paste that into your remote desktop client when you go to connect to it. The other cool thing about Amazon, again, if you don't have experience with it, if you've ever heard of AMIs, we talked a little bit about it when you went to create the thing. Um, it's really, really easy once you have your VM all set up to basically say, save this so that next time I create, I want to spin up a new instance. Because um, you don't need to leave these things running. You can take them up and down. You can delete them and then create a new one. When you go over to this VM once it's all set up <clears throat> on the CC2 instance, and you go down to image and templates, and you say create image. And basically that saves kind of that state. I've previously done that. So I've got a couple different AMIs where I previously installed Cyber, previously configured all of the uh, firewall rules and anything that need to be there, and then away I go.